Just quickly, this is a picture of a guy uh, pursuing his own dream of personal freedom. He's on a customized, vintage, old-school chopper Harley in Sweden. He also happens to be the head of motorcycle design for BMW motorcycles. <laughs> but that's not the point. <laughs> the, the point is, he met with some of our designers in Milan last fall at the motorcycle show, and he had a very simple request for our design team. And he said, please, please continue to do what you do. And they were like, what do you mean? I use you guys as an example all the time with my manufacturing folks that say it can't be done. And I say, if it can't be done, how come Harley's doing it? And you guys just continue to push finishes, push materials, push the boundaries and the limits, and challenge the people who say it can't be done. Because if it isn't hard, it isn't worth doing. And our design team, our stylists believe that if it's hard to do, it's hard to follow. And so they work hard to make things difficult for us to produce, and we work hard to make sure that we can execute it because there's a lot in execution. I mean, it's great if it's sitting on a, on a tube or on a table as some concept. If it can't be built, it's not really uh, going to help us in the business. So this is an example of a recent product line. It's called Hard Candy Custom. It's metal flake paint, very, very hard to produce in the kind of quality and volume that we require. And he was using that specifically as an example. I, I ran in with tears in my eyes to my manufacturing folks saying, if Harley can do this, how come we can't do this? So in closing, this is another quote that uh, Willie G has frequently uh, heard to say that God is in the details. And that could mean a lot of things to a lot of people. To me, it speaks to the soul and the spirit and the spirituality that wraps around our product and the obligation and duty that we feel as a company to make sure that we deliver the promise that we have set out for our riders everywhere in the world uh, for pursuing their dreams of personal freedom through Harley-Davidson. So. And, and leadership is a choice, and it is a choice to lead. It is a choice to say, I want today to be better than yesterday. I want better things for my family, my community, for my job, for my colleagues, etc., than we enjoyed yesterday. And to us, and to me in particular, that choice is a very fundamental uh, and elemental aspect of a leadership mindset. And so we talk about this in every one of you know, our classes. I specifically talk about it because leadership is everything. If you have an organization that wants to learn, that wants to grow, that believes that tomorrow can and should be better than yesterday, you know, those are leadership qualities that we're pulling together under those four pillars. And then the final uh, pillar of sustainability is really capital S sustainability. It isn't, of course it is, you know, better, uh, more fuel efficient motorcycles and, and less waste in all of our processes and less resource intensive uh, choices in the work that we do. But it's also the sustainability of what we do and, and, and what we have as our banner statement under sustainability is preserve and renew the freedom to ride. Okay, that's the business we're in. We don't just sell motorcycles. We don't just sell great motorcycles. We liberate people in their dream of personal freedom. And I think about this a lot. I was riding yesterday afternoon about this idea of personal freedom. And it's a very interesting thing that I enjoy when I'm on my motorcycle. <clears throat> which is it's a fairly intense process. I was on I-94 at 3 in the afternoon coming into Milwaukee. There's traffic everywhere, construction. I am on a heightened sense of alert. And at the same time, very oddly, my mind is absolutely liberated to do the best thinking that I do when I'm in this fairly intense, um, important um, experience and it literally frees my mind to get to places where I can't otherwise get to. So this dimension of personal freedom applies uh, you know, across our business for our customers across the world in many ways. It isn't about cultures, it isn't about borders, it isn't about generations. And we believe that what we do for people is much greater than they're able to get otherwise and certainly on any other motorcycle brand. 
and the sustainability of all that is a big part of our business. So growth, continuous improvement, leadership, and sustainability. You know, we're looking for a culture, right? And, and, and we have a culture. And, and I already talked about some of the things that are just remarkably strong about our culture, right? There are some things that are particularly tough about our culture that we're working on through all these means to, to change. Um, you know, we, we have this thing called the brand legend. And the brand legend was developed so that all of our 6,000 employees and all of our dealers around the world understand kind of the core essence of what the brand means so that they have that in mind when they're making decisions about, you know, an event or, uh, you know, some new initiative. What is the tone of voice of the brand? What, you know, because we want to reinforce that brand every chance we get. You know, I got up at this morning. I knew I was speaking to you. I figured you'd be dressed more or less like you're dressed. I wore my business dress, which is, you know, jeans and a Harley shirt and a Harley belt. That's where it stops. <laughs> we, we, do, we, do, we do sell the other products, but we, I want my personal freedom. So, um, and, and as I've said to other groups, I rather, you know, explain to a banker why I'm dressed like this than to a biker why I'm in a suit. Okay? Yeah. Because this is a reinforcing statement about what Harley-Davidson's all about, and we have to make those reinforcing statements everywhere. We what does rebel mean in, in the four walls of the company? And our chief marketing officer, because we don't want to have a different brand legend for our customers and a different sort of brand legend for our company. How does rebel translate into the four walls of our plants and offices? And his really great sort of interpretation of this is that it's not rebel against, it's rebel for the customer, okay? And it, and it speaks actually really strongly to the whole idea of continuous improvement, right? Rebelling against the status quo. We are not satisfied with the status quo at this company. We want something better. We deserve something better. We're going to go get something better. So, you know, this is all kind of the, the whole sort of cultural journey that we are on. We are getting at it through a number of different means. Some of the stuff I just talked about. We have no longer a mission and a vision. We have a purpose, and it's a very simple purpose. We had two long, wordy statements that nobody could remember. And quite honestly, I went to business school and everything. I'm still not sure what the difference between a mission and a vision really is <laughs> and why you need both. Honestly, I never, I always, people would talk about it like, okay, you know, so we have a purpose. We fulfill the dreams of personal freedom. Nobody can forget it. It's abundantly true. It's globally relevant. It's powerful. It's unique. It's ours. It's what we stand for. You know, we're, we're, we're cleaning up some of the other things as it relates to our values and our behaviors. We have all these elements, too many ingredients in the soup, right? How do we clarify it for our employees? So we're doing more work on that. We're having these discussions openly with employees. This brand legend thing I talked about, you know, I share with every employee group because it's important for them to know what it is we want to preserve about our rich culture and how we need to adapt it into something that's more sustainable more powerful for our future. And that's fundamentally, you know, kind of the, 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 the journey that we're on is, is really a cultural journey. The, the learning and development investment is a piece of it. And as well as sending another message that, you know, as soon as we think we're done, we're done. So we're not going to stop. We do a lot of work on leadership, and I speak in, in front of every level of people in the organization about views on leadership, and I start by saying leadership is not a title, it is not a position, it is a point of view. It is a point of view that you know mothers have, fathers have, husbands and wives, and it, it's not just a point of view about business. Do you wake up in the morning and believe and decide you want to make a difference? Do you have a point of view on how things should be better? Do you bring it every day? Do we have an environment where people get to bring it and where titles don't matter and positions don't matter? 
that it's all about subordinating the personal agenda for the strategy of the company and, the, and for us the purpose of the company and how does everybody come together around that. And when you have that, when you have a group of people that bring kind of those attributes, you have an environment that celebrates it, amazing things can happen.